psoriasis forms they can be divided on the basis of the morphology of the lesion also on the distribution of the lesions first regarding the morphology of lesions the most important is the guttate psoriasis the guttate psoriasis it generally occurs in children and it follows group a beta hemolytic streptococci infection generally manifest as fever coryza followed by development of small erythematous papules and plaques mainly concentrated over the trunk and they appear as crop and the important point is that there is minimal scaling in these lesions so the auspic sign is negative and also the good point about this psoriasis is that uh, it resolves spontaneously in 6 to 8 weeks the second is the rupeoid psoriasis in which there are thick limpet like scales this type of psoriasis lesions they are also characteristically present in reiter's disease in reiter's disease which is commonly asked in the exams we need to remember some important points about it first is that it is associated with hla b27 which is very characteristic and the skin lesions in this disease they are keratoderma blennerigicum and on the glands uh, it manifests as sarcinate balanitis apart from these skin lesions there is association with arthritis and also there is association with uveitis or the iridocyclitis next type of the psoriasis it is the elephantine psoriasis in which there is involvement of the skin in the form of thick large persistent scales the next is the ostracious psoriasis in which there are oyster shell like scales which are the ring like hyperkeratotic scales next is the uh, flexural psoriasis this is also known as inverse psoriasis it is inverse of the most common chronic plaque psoriasis which occurs on the extensors as this occurs on the flexors the flexors like the inframammary area the axilla the groin they are involved and in this also there is minimal scaling the next type is the penile psoriasis in this we have to remember two things in circumscribed and uncircumscribed it is different in circumscribed males there is scaling is present but in uncircumscribed male the scaling is absent next we come to the scalp psoriasis the scalp psoriasis it has to be differentiated from seborrheic dermatitis or the seborrheic capitis both of them they have scales but uh, there are distinguishable features between both of them in seborrheic capitis there is diffuse scaling and the scales they are greasy and yellow but in psoriatic Uh, lesions they are well defined erythematous lesions and there is whitish scales overlying them uh, now coming to palmo plantar psoriasis we have to differentiate it from the palmo plantar eczema or dermatitis and there are distinguishing features between them in dermatitis or eczema there is history of oozing and the scales they are ill defined and diffuse but in psoriasis they are well defined erythematous scales and they are deep and fissured but history of oozing is absent then there is pustular psoriasis in pustular psoriasis basically there are four forms which are uh, recognized one is the localized pustular variant in this the lesions on the palms and soles the well defined erythematous lesions studded on them they are pustules second is the generalized variant which is known as the von zumbusch type there is lack of pus on an underlying erythematous base then there is acrodermatitis continua of halopio which is present as pustular lesions over the tips of the fingers and most commonly they are associated with nail changes also then there is generalized pustular variant in pregnancy which is known as the impetigo herpetiformis these pustular lesions they are most commonly triggered by two factors one is that there could be irritant effect of the topical therapy and the second is that the steroids which are given to the patient they are withdrawn and the pustules in this they are sterile and they are not infected now coming to another variant which is the erythrodermic type in erythrodermic type there is generalized involvement of the skin more than 90% body surface area in the form of generalized erythema and scaling this can also be triggered by those two factors which trigger the pustular psoriasis that is the irritant effect of the topical therapy or the withdrawal of the steroids the main problem with erythrodermic psoriasis is the metabolic complications associated with it now coming to the nail involvement in the psoriasis the nails they are involved in around 25 to 50% of the patients and the nail changes they can be attributed to pathology lying either in the nail matrix or the nail bed if the pathology lies in the nail matrix it manifests as pitting of the nails crumbling or thickening of the nail plate or nicorexis tracheonychia or color changes which can be in the form of white nails known as leukonychia or red spots in the lenula the most common out of these is the pitting of the nails uh, regarding pitting you have to remember that there are coarse irregular pits mostly thimble like pits the significant pitting we say when the pits are more than 20 in number the pitting in psoriatic nails they signify that the loss of the parakeratotic foci if the pathology lies in the nail bed then what do we get we get four uh, signs one is the oil drop or the salmon patch dyschromia there is onycholysis the splinter hemorrhages and there can be subungual hyperkeratosis these were all the nail changes which we see in psoriasis and the most common was the pitting now coming to joint involvement it is generally seen in around 10% of the patients we have a classification for this which is known as the mollendright classification 
In this there are five types of arthritis which are present in psoriasis. The most common type it is the asymmetric oligoarticular arthritis which mainly involves the small joints of the hands and feet. The most characteristic is the arthritis of the distal interpharyngeal joint. The other types they are the rheumatoid arthritis like arthritis and arthritis mutilans. The X-ray signs which are seen in these patients, the most characteristic, the two signs which we have to remember is the pencil and cup sign and the opera glass deformity. The other signs which can be seen are the sausage digits, ivory phalanx, telescopic fingers. Uh, the diagnosis of psoriasis, it can be based on the clinical characteristics which we have already talked about and the second is the skin biopsy or the histopathology which shows certain characteristic features. Starting from the top to bottom from epidermis to dermal changes, the first is the increase in the thickness of the stratum corneum which is known as hyperkeratosis, presence of nuclei in the stratum corneum which is known as parakeratosis, the increase in the stratum spinosum layer which is in the form of regular acanthosis loss of granular layer, then coming to the dermal changes, the presence of dilated capillaries in the dermal papilla. Apart from these, there can be club-shaped retoridges and suprapapillary thinning. Then there can be neutrophil exocytosis in the epidermis. If the neutrophil's collection it is present in the stratum corneum, it is known as Munro's microapsis. While if the neutrophil collection it is present in stratum spinosum, these are known as spongiform pustule of Kogoj. Thank you for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe.